Good morning and welcome to Coffee with the Sarlows. I'm Kelly. Good morning, I'm Karen. We'll start off with show notes today as usual. Our Evening with Medium events, um, as many of you know, is a two-hour channeling event here in North Bay, Ontario, Canada. It's something that we absolutely love doing for the public a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with COVID, um, that will not be happening in 2021, but we do always like to take the opportunity to say thank you to everyone who is interested and has inquired about that. Stay tuned, um, I suppose pose later this year for updates. Mm -hmm. Kelly and I have a second podcast series called Sips of Sanity. Those are 10 to 15 minute podcasts that run the very first week of every single month, Monday to Friday. The topic is emotional and intuitive intelligence tools. The very first show is available at bysarlo.com and on YouTube. The remaining four that goes with that every single month is at patreon.com forward slash by Sarlo. Yes, Patreon is a membership platform that you can buy into monthly or annually, whichever is better for you. And it has a whack of different benefits that include emotional and intuitive intelligence toolkits. So it's a huge expansion on mm -hmm. Sips of Sanity. There's actually early access to Coffee with the Sarlos as well. These come out on Saturdays for the public. Thursdays for our patrons. And we have um, a brand new book club as well that we've introduced to Patreon, which is an emotionally intelligent book club. I think yeah. we've said that word a million times in these show notes, <laughs> but we're big on it. So if you are interested, we have other things like journeying to open up your intuitive intelligence. And in our top tier, we also have an opportunity for a free draw every month for a half hour session with Karen or myself. So if you are interested, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash by Sarlo. Kelly and I also have private practices that are separate, of course. You can send us a request for a session if you visit the website by sarlo.com. We do those sessions for people all over the world. And we do them by Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, telephone, WhatsApp, and Theralink. A most commonly asked question by you, the viewer, and our client is, will it be as accurate as if we are in person with you? Yes. The answer is yes. Those sessions are just as accurate whether you're in Australia or you're right here in Canada where we live. Our relationship with the spirit world is what makes your session accurate, not where you're sitting. Good. And last but not least, we have gift certificates available. If you're looking to purchase those, um, they can be for anyone, anywhere in the world, as Karen has just mentioned. Mm -hmm. We do PDF printable formats. We can email to you for contactless um, delivery, I suppose. And if you're here in North Bay and want a tangible one, we can write that out, put it in our mailbox, and you can pick that up with contactless pickup. Let's move on to today's show, Karen. Okay. So um, what do you want to name her? Oh, it's a her. Okay. Um, Georgie. Okay. So Georgie books her session and we did this by some device, meaning we could see each other. And, um, at the very beginning of the session, she said that she was a prior client and that she was calling again to check in on mom. Hmm. And mom comes through and says to me, I'm dead. Now, we say that because we get people that are alive, we get people with dementia, with Alzheimer's, people in st with strokes or in comas, so we don't make an assumption that when someone says, tell me about someone, that they're medium, just because we're mediums. So I clarify with Georgie that her mom has passed over, and she says, yes, I've seen you before, and I had to explain to her, but we don't remember the sessions. Mm -hmm. And we don't keep files on clients. So I said to her... Those would be the weirdest files. <laughs> I don't even know how that could happen. No. <laughs> so I just said, well, um, your mom's coming in, and I said, she's, she's quite happy to be here. And she says to me, her mom, and what do you want to name her mom? Talia. Talia and Georgia. Georgie, Georgia. Oh, whatever. pardon me, Georgie. Okay. So Talia says to me, um, I want her to know that I'm in the house with her. I said, okay. She says, so um, I know you can't see anything because she's very much like what you and I are doing right now in that if people are watching us on YouTube, they can see that there's a wall behind us. Oh. 
and that you can't hear any other noises in the house. Mm -hmm. So just this kind of atmosphere that all I can see and hear is Georgie and a wall behind her. That's, that's kind of it. And, um, her mom says her dad is in the house. So there he, so he's alive and I have to, I have to stress all, uh, or clarify all of that, of course. For me too. Okay. So her dad's in the house. He's alive. Her brother's in the house. He's alive. Her sister's in the house. She's alive. And they're going to have supper together. And I said, okay, so are they living there together or is this a visit? And she goes, no, they're living together. And it is an odd combination because they're all adults, but it's COVID. And so it's her house and her dad and brother and sister have moved in. Mm. And it's just, I don't know why, but it's, it's just the way that it is. So I said, okay. So I, I said to Georgie that information and she says, yeah, that's true. And she says, they are all here. And she kind of laughed and I said, you're going to have a meal. And she goes, we, we are. And I said, she wants you to know she's in the house. That's significant because a lot of people have the belief that when someone dies, that they're in heaven or I don't know all of the different places. I was going to say hell. <laughs> I, and, I, and I wanted to say that jokingly, but some people actually believe it. Mm -hmm. And or limbo or um, I, d I don't know, because different belief systems have different locations and different, I say locations because I call heaven a location. Mm -hmm. And some people don't have any beliefs, so they think it's like a great big black hole called space, and it's scary. It means that they don't really know where their loved ones are, and so they have a lot of stress and anxiety over the belief system, mm -hmm. or whatever, because that is a belief system. It's not a lack of, it is one. So I'm, I'm aware, and I ask Talia, if she's saying this to comfort her because of a belief system or what's going on. And she said, well, she says, I do want to explain that I want her to know that because I want my daughter to know that I love her. I want to give her that affirmation to say, I love you. I'm here. I'm here. I don't, I'm not, it's not, I love you. And I'm gone so far away that how could you believe that I love you? if I'm so far away. So she, so she, she says that, and then she links it to your dad and your brother and your sister in the house. And you're going to be having a meal after this so that she's being a little bit, again, a little bit more specific as to who's there with her, who's in the house and what they're going to do together. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Talia says, and I'm going to eat with them. I'm going to have a meal with them. And again, that's specific because there are belief systems that wouldn't allow that thought, mm -hmm. that concept. Talia then says, I want you to know that she's going to tell them about her session during the meal and that while they want to hear that I'm around, while they want to hear these things, they don't really believe it. So they don't know what to do. So... Georgie's going to say things and some of them are going to just listen and be silent and she won't know if they're really listening or dismissing. Mm -hmm. And she's going to make her best effort to give the validations, hoping that when they hear the validations that they'll accept them and that they will change what they believe. But it's not really on her. They didn't book an appointment. They're not even trying. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to, she's going to explain these things in the, in the hopes because she sees how much they're grieving. And this is one of her ways consciously and sometimes subconsciously to try and help them with their grieving and what they're going through. So then I repeated that and she said, yes, that's very true. And I am recording this right now, not writing notes, but I am recording it all. And her mom said, I'm glad that she's recording it 
because they may ask for these recordings at a later date, mm-hmm. meaning later tonight, later this weekend, this month, in a year, whenever they're ready. And that she can keep those and choose to share them, or she can say, no, make your own appointments, find your own medium, do your own work. This is not on her, but I understand what she's doing in her intention. And I'm trying to say that I understand Georgie's intention because that's a different level of giving an affirmation. Mm. So she's saying who's in the house because that's one level that's tangible. The human is standing in front of you. I call that a hard fact. And then the next one is what her intention is, which I call a softer message, meaning that Georgie has to know what her intention was. She has to have her own level of integrity to sit there and say, yes. Oh, yeah. I would say awareness. Oh, it can be awareness. It can be integrity. It can be both. Because you and I both know that people can have a level of awareness Mm -hmm. and then as much as they want it, dismiss it just like her family does. Absolutely. So the next little thing is, Talia says to me, Karen, she says, I want you to talk about my husband. And she says, and I want you to give the message to to Georgie. And she's okay with this. So you go right ahead. But I want my husband to know that I know that he's doing his best to take care of himself. So he's eating better since I've died. Um, He's going to the gym and working out. And um, he's overall just trying to take better care of himself. And he was going to the gym and he's struggling now because of COVID. So he has to figure out how to do some of his stuff to be physically fit And also to process grief, because working out helps you process grief and take care of your mind. So um, I'm suggesting that he takes two cans of soup and go for a walk. Mm. And Georgie goes, and her jaw just drops. And she goes, what? And then she giggles. And then she says to me, because I'm trying to move on. And she's like, no, no, I want. I want to tell you something. She says, there's a story to this. And I said, two cans of soup? And she goes, yes. She says, and I want to tell you. She says, when my, this is a story in the family. She says, when my dad was a child and he did something his parents thought was wrong and wanted to punish him, they made him carry two cans of soup or two bushels of potatoes or, and I can't remember all the things that he had to carry around the block as a punishment. Oh, wow. So, and then as an adult now, this is a family story. So my mom is bringing up a family story to give my dad a validation. And I, I'm hoping that I word this correctly, that it isn't still a place of suffering for him, but has become more of a joke. So I hope I've worded that that well. I tried to listen to that in the pod or in her recording and get the right essence of that message Mm -hmm. was, here's a little bit of a joke. Why don't you take your two cans of soup and hike it out the door (laughs) and go for a walk because you need to work out and you don't have weights. So pick up some cans of soup and go. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was meant like I'm here to bring up a bad memory and to hurt you. It was done in jest Mm -hmm. kindness. And it's a story to validate for everybody at the dinner table that this is what would have happened at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. That likely if he said something about, well, I need to, you know, to get my exercise in today, she might've said, well, then babe, go for your walk and take your cans of soup with you. Mm -hmm. And he would have, there would have been a chuckle and then he would have not taken his cans of soup, obviously, but gone out the door and and had his walk. So she's trying to show that she knows what's going on and what's important to her husband, what changes that he's made since she's passed and bring a little humor into the conversation. And it's a family story. So there's lots of validations there done kindly. Mm -hmm. Then Talia says to me, I want to move on now. And I want to give another story because I'm trying to prove I'm in that damn house today. (laughs) She's working. (laughs) She's so working, Kelly. And she says, okay, she says, I want you to tell my daughter, she says, tell Georgie that I'm sitting in the wooden chair. And she shows me the chair. So I'm now remote viewing the chair. And she says, this is, this is, it's got wood in it. So I'm describing it to Georgie and she's just sitting listening. And I said, it's her chair. So she's identifying that this is her favorite chair. As in she owned it? Oh. Or maybe that didn't come Possibly. 
I don't know that answer. Okay. It's just the one she She sits refers in. to her chair. So I'm not positive about that one. Okay. And I didn't write that in the notes. So I don't know. Um, she refers to it as her chair. She shows it to me. It's got wood in it. And she shows that there's material, but it's not leather. So she's trying to show me the feel of it to say it's got material in it. It's not a wooden, like just a solid wood chair. Mm -hmm. It's got some different textures to it, but it's significant that it's a wood chair. So I said, Georgie, I said, your mom says that she's sitting in this wood chair and she calls it hers. And I repeat that message. And she goes, oh my God, Karen. And is she's so happy, Kelly, because the wood chair that her mom says she's currently in this very moment sitting in is three feet beside her out of camera view. Mm -hmm. So Georgie knows I can't see the chair. She can see that I can't see it, but it's just out of view beside her. And this is her mom's chair. And she words it that way. She says, that's, that was my mom's chair. She goes, it's right beside me. So you're basically telling me that my mom is sitting beside me. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, Georgie. I said, she's really trying to validate she's in the damn house. Like she's really trying to get this across to everybody. And she goes, I know why. (laughs) And of course, everybody knows why now that's listening to the show, because Georgie accepts this. She sits in it and values the messages. And part of that is that it brings her joy. Mm -hmm. At no point does Georgie go, (gasps) Mm -hmm. out of fear. At no point does she go, ooh, out of disgust. Or at no point does she go, well, that's just weird, out of this is going to, like other people are going to make fun of me, so I have to dismiss it. Georgie goes into pure joy that her mom's in the house sitting beside her and screw everybody else's opinions, including friends, family, um, TV, well, it's, it's just everything. flat out saying, I accept love. That's it. That's the point. Thank you. You did beautifully. Get yeah. to the point. Thank you. Because the, the alternative for everyone else who had the reactions you just demonstrated is, I don't. Mm-hmm. And that that is exactly why this was brought up. Because in her session, she chooses love with her mother. And she realizes that family members may choose fear. And because of it, they choose denial or some challenges. We'll word it kindly here. Challenges to feeling love and connection to mom. It's not that they don't want it. They do but that they choose, and I'm, I'm really trying to be careful, that they choose to stay in the other emotions. Okay. <laughs> I know you're struggling. Isolated. Yes. Like you're, you're choosing to isolate yourself from a beautiful experience. Yes, very much. And, and I, I'm grateful in this moment that you, you are doing that. I am purposely, I know you're going to. So I'm purposely explaining everything else for the people mm-hmm. who listen to this because they may be the very people that choose to be like the ones that dismiss it and miss love instead of the people that choose love at every turn instead. I, th- I hope when people are listening to this, they can understand how these two options, these two choices, mm-hmm. change your grief. Yes, exactly. You know, there's, um, how do I want to say this? The people who choose to love, to believe in that connection that continues beyond this life, this human life, their grief keeps them connected. And it doesn't look like sadness. It's still grief because we miss, we, we long for those, those people, but we, we stay connected to that emotion or that feeling that we gave one another. Mm-hmm. The people who choose isolation are the ones who experience very deep sadness in mm-hmm. their grief. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes paralysis to a certain degree in it. Mm-hmm. And a physical paralysis, some people can't go back to work. Yeah. Some people can't eat. They can't function. The paralysis is not just emotional. It's physical. I will say too, because there will be listeners, and I think I can put myself ahead of, of 
uh, of myself here and know that sometimes you do have deep grief, believe in all these things that they are with you Mm -hmm. and still experience paralysis, Mm -hmm. but that's not the same as isolation. That's right. And I want to make that difference because Mm -hmm. I know if you died today, I'd be the one in the middle knowing that the connection still exists, inviting all of those affirmations Mm -hmm. and those experiences, but still likely experiencing paralysis. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just enough, if that's okay to put it that Mm -hmm. way. I'm setting a low bar here, but I I mean it for a good reason. Mm -hmm. It's just enough to know the difference between choosing isolation Mm -hmm. and choosing love and connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Then Talia says to me, oh no, pardon me, Kelly. Then Talia starts giving me smells and in a very, um, in an order. (laughs) Now, if anybody does aromatherapy, they're going to know this is not possible, but, but it happens. (laughs) So she says to me, here you go, Karen. And I smell peppermint and it's like, oh, oh, okay. I can smell things. What is this? And then she gives me fruity smells of orange. And I go, oh, that's neroli. Because I know that one. I love it. And and although I know there's also blood orange and that there's other ones as well. And then I get lavender and then coconut. So I get four smells in a row where I can clearly smell one and it's gone 100%. Clearly smell the next one, gone 100%. And I say that because if you're doing aromatherapy, nothing's gone 100%. The, the scent stays in the air until it dissipates. So I don't know how to explain that because that's part of one of the gifts, but it happens. And so I said to her, okay, I said, I have to, I have to go into aromatherapy. And she goes, yes, like this. And I, she goes, what about it? And I said, well, your mom is giving me these different scents. And she says that peppermint, and she goes, what? And I said, She's, I can smell peppermint first and that it's one of your mom's favorites. Then I smell orange and it's your favorite. And then I smell lavender and it's your mom's favorite. And then I get, so she's going back and forth. Mom's like second favorite? Second favorite. Okay. Pardon me. Second favorite. And then the last one is coconut and I see feet. So she goes, oh my God. So she goes, this is fantastic. So she affirms for me whose favorites are whose and that that's correct. Her mom's named them properly. Then... As have you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And then she's, uh, she says, please thank her. My daughter used these for me doing my nails and on my feet. So there was... It was specific that she used the coconut for her mom's feet but that she used the lavender and the peppermint for her nails. Oh, I hope I get all of this absolutely spot on. I wrote it down, so hopefully I did. You know, you got it in the session, and I think that's the part that matters. <laughs> yeah, me too. And listeners can bear with you. Yeah. So her mom is very specific to say which which scents she uses on her for herself and which ones her daughter likes for herself. And then which ones are her nails and which ones are for feet. And then her daughter says to me, and I plan to do my own foot bath after this, like in this evening after dinner. And she says, and I will use the coconut. So the whole thing gelled Mm -hmm. from the past um, to the preferences for each person to, in fact, what her daughter was planning to do that evening and what what scent she was choosing to use, Mm -hmm. which I think is just absolutely... Like, how else do you say I love you and I'm trying to prove I'm in your house? You know, and I think, too, about the way, like, Talia, I'm going to say woke up. She's a spirit, so clearly that didn't happen. But she woke up that day and she was like, you know what? I'm going to have my shit together so well and I'm going to work real hard. Yeah. It's like, I, she's working 10 times harder than most humans I know. Oh, yeah. And, like, and, and has it together. She so does, Kelly. She's so organized and everything. She made doing this session so easy for me. Mm -hmm. But I have to give complete credit to Georgie 
because Georgie is the client that accepts the information. Yes. I don't feel any sense of resistance from Georgie in the entire session. Mm -hmm. So it's so easy to bounce back and forth between the energy of my human and the energy of Talia in the spirit world. It is so congruent for me that it is so easy to channel it. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that to help people understand that why is one medium better than another? Mm -hmm. why, why, are you, why are you better today than you were a year ago when I called you? And some people will say to me, oh, Karen, you've improved. I saw you a year ago and you're way more accurate. And I want to say, girl, you don't even know what you're talking about. That's just your human thoughts. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to do with me getting better in a year. It has to do with the fact that you're more relaxed and sitting into your energy and it's easier to read for you. You've done your own work. It's not all about that I've done my work. I'm going to offer an alternative uh, option here. And I, and I think what you have said is very valuable. There's also the component where you can have a really great open client and you channel someone with a brain injury. Oh, you channel perfect. someone who has who had mental illness on yeah. earth where they will actually give you the amount of scatteredness they experienced yes. so that we can actually accurately explain their personality and their behaviors. Right. And that looks messy when you're channeling because you have to say to them, I'm sorry, I can't follow my train of thought. And if you have a connected and kind client, they will say, and that's how they lived. Mm -hmm. continue or take your time or whatever that kind response may be. Right. Because it, especially if it's an affirmation, because then you and we understand what's going on in the brain mm -hmm. and we're able to go, oh, that's how they thought they had dementia. Okay, cool. And then you get back into doing the job. But those sessions look far more disjointed. Oh yes. Than the ones that you're describing when, when both energies are just efficient. Right. Mm hmm then Talia says, I want to move on. I want to talk about my husband again. So she flip flops, which is great. She says, um, I want to say that my husband needs hugs. And so I repeated that to Georgie and she goes, Oh, that's so true. Dad's been asking for more hugs lately. Hmm. That's exactly accurate, Karen. And just sat in that. And she just loved that message. She just kind of sat there and took it all in. Like mom knows that about dad. Ah, oh. Like imagine just really taking that in. Mm -hmm. Mom knows dad needs hugs. Dad's been asking for more hugs. That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then Talia says to me, um, I want you to mention to Georgie that her dad needs the wheel of emotions mm -hmm. and that he he's trying harder to express his emotions since I passed instead of just keeping them in or avoiding talking about them. Um, but he needs the wheel of emotions because he doesn't really know what to say. He could say, I'm sad today. It's a rough day, but he doesn't understand or have the words to say, I feel isolated. Mm. I, I am withholding. I am, and use the wheel so that people can go, oh, you feel isolated. Okay. Do you want to play a game of Scrabble? Do you want, like, how do you want to reach out then so that you don't feel isolated? What do you need? Because when we don't, identify the wheel or our emotions specifically, and we use the general terms in the first layer, it leaves people stranded. Mm -hmm. It leaves them uneducated and with a lack of ability to know how to connect to you or what your needs are. And here Talia is coming through and saying, Georgie, if you knew more, I know you would reach out in different ways. You're blocked by your dad's lack of communication. Not because her dad's a jerk. Not or doesn't feel. Yeah, but because he simply doesn't have the wheel to be able to identify it for himself. And so Talia is standing there going, hey, there's a wheel of emotions all over the internet. You can print it out, download it, print it everywhere, post it all over the house, put it in your pocket. I know you've done certain things because I've seen where you've put your wheel of emotions. Mm -hmm. and how you've got different size. And be before COVID, you laminated them. Mm -hmm. And so Talia comes through to say, please tell your dad to use the wheels so that he can identify what he's feeling to help himself. And then to articulate it to other people 
so that there's a better form of communication and meeting each other's needs and being aware of what that person is feeling. She's hoping and trying to give the tools so that he can create a healthier process for him to connect to his children. Because here he is living in the house with his kids and wondering why he's feeling isolated. I think you just described 99% of all households. I am. And and I'm glad you pointed that out, Kelly. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fantastic that Talia knows that and um, is able to bring it to Georgie's attention. Georgie knows it. She just doesn't understand that there's a wheel of emotions. Mm -hmm. She just doesn't know that that, that it exists. And here's a tool. So here's mom reaching through from the other side and saying through medium, here's a tool for all of you. Use them. Then I see her mom getting a back massage, like Mm -hmm. right out of the blue. Oh my God. (laughs) I like your response. (laughs) Yeah, girl. (laughs) So she shows me that someone is giving her a back massage, but I don't see that it's her husband. And as I'm watching it, she goes, watch, watch my massage. So I'm just standing there with Talia, watching the massage as Georgie's looking at me. And I see the massage therapist move around and all of a sudden stop. And I thought she was, I thought she was finding like a knot in her back. And she goes, no, no, look closer, Karen. So sorry, who's being massaged? Talia. Talia's showing you her massage when she was on earth. Earth. Okay. When she was alive. Oh my God. Thank God you're here to clarify. Well, I thought that was the case. And maybe listeners were like, yeah, Kelly, keep up. Oh no. I'm so glad that you're doing that. And as I lean in to, to watch the the massage occurring, I see a lump. And she goes, there's a lump on my back. And I'm like, okay, tell you what, what's going on. She goes, well, I'm showing this to you because it's the massage therapist that found the lump on my back and told me about it. I didn't know it existed. Then I went to the doctor. They ran the tests and confirmed that I have cancer. And this is how they discovered my cancer. Mm-hmm. And so I said, oh, so you died of cancer. And she goes, yes. So she hadn't have to- she didn't tell me that at the beginning. She told me that when she showed me the massage occurring and who was the one that found it for her and how she was able to get help. And I think that is such an important thing to share in a podcast because a lot of people married or single don't, don't have anybody that checks their body. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our kids get to a certain age and they shower and bathe on their own. And that's all good that they do. That's privacy. But we forget that it's still important to have somebody look at our body mm-hmm. and check our body for us. And I know right now it's in particular very difficult because we're in COVID where we don't have medical appointments to go in and say, you know, while you're doing my medical, can I flip over? Could you check my back? I'm single. I know that every time I have a medical, I ask my doctor to check my whole body because I'm single. And so I will say, can I turn over? Because you don't usually turn over Mm -hmm. when you're laying on the table for your physical and have them look at your back. And so I will pull my hair up so they can look at my neck. And I say to them, please check because... I need somebody to look at my physical form. Mm -hmm. So I thought this was really important to bring out today that Talia actually has this massage therapist, thank God, that finds it. I want to point out, I don't know if this is going to be redundant. You've asked me to do that. Oh, yes. And it was a really wonderful lesson that I got from you about the importance of having someone in your life that you trust to do that. And that you engage them that way. Yeah. And I, I recognize that you're asking me because you're single. And I think that's beautiful. But I wanted to say you taught that to me and I took that into my partnership. Oh. And I said to my partner, can you look? I have a spot on my on my back. Mm-hmm. And I said, can you just kind of watch it over time? And he was like, what do you mean? Why? And I said, well, because you're my person and mm-hmm. because if we're doing a life together, mm-hmm. you'll be the one to notice Mm -hmm. I need that help. And it dawned on me then that a lot of people don't understand this. A lot of people don't ask for that or assume it in their partnerships. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't, 
if you don't witness parents doing this, if you don't witness your role model doing it, then you also don't know that this is something that should be experienced. Mm -hmm. And if you grew up in a family of people who are skeptical of medical professionals Mm -hmm. or mistrusting of them, then this might not be something that you think to do. Mm -hmm. I just so appreciated it because it brought a a different level of intimacy Mm -hmm. in the sense of how to care for someone you care about. Mm -hmm. Well, Kelly, I know that you run your hands all over Parker. Every day. And I know now that you have Winston, that you will run your hands all over Winston. Winston and Parker are Kelly's dogs, just in case (laughs) you're listening for the first time. I just realized, wow, does Kelly walk around running her hands all over people? (laughs) What's up with that? (laughs) Don't call me. (laughs) Right. I know that you do that for your pets so Mm -hmm. that you... And I know because of Parker that he had be with his breed that he actually has cysts. Mm-hmm. So it's part of his care now. But you did that from the moment he came home before you even knew that he was going to have them. Mm-hmm. That you were already, you know, going over his ears, running it right down his body, his legs, his paws, like every single part of him. Mm-hmm. So that you knew what was supposed to be there to feel healthy and when something was not. Yes, we just finished in our book club um, for January, Who Moved My Cheese? And I think that part of this raking my dogs yeah. <laughs> is sniffing out the cheese. Right. So that you can notice when when small changes are occurring so that you can be ready. Right. Now I want to preface, or I want to say something in this. Um, this does not give you the right to cross people's boundaries. So I just, for some listeners here that are going to hear that and go off and say, take off your clothes, I'm checking your body. No. (laughs) You should call us to have a different conversation. (laughs) Yes. But I just, I know there are all kinds of people in the world that listen to podcasts and might listen to that and then go right off and abuse somebody. And I'm not encouraging crossing people's boundaries. Including your children. Exactly. So if you like this concept and you think, ooh, I want to do that, I want to teach my young children this, then teach them. Don't demand from them. Right. Say to them, okay, this is when we take our clothes off, this is when we look at our feet and our legs and we we look for changes. Yeah. This can be something where it's not scary. They're not anticipating finding something terrible. Mm -hmm. They learn. We observe. Yes. We just want to be careful because that is a very sensitive Sensitive. conversation. Love when we're in sync. (laughs) It feels like all the stars align. (laughs) That's good. Okay. I'm going to move on now. Are Mm -hmm. you ready? Okay. So Talia then says to me, I want to talk again about my husband and I want to acknowledge the fact that By the time that they found the lump and I died, it was very quick. Mm. She said, this did not go on for a long time. And I got very, very sick. And um, I needed, I needed care. I needed a lot of care. And she says, my daughter helped. She says, people helped in different ways. So I want to acknowledge that there's different ways to help. Someone can shovel a driveway and it's still helpful. Because it means dad has free time to sit with me, brush no my one, hair. No one in Northern Ontario needed that explanation. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fair. But she's trying to acknowledge that it doesn't have to be direct help, mm. that it can be indirect and it is still help. So she's trying to say thank you to everyone that's helping. But in particular at this moment, she's saying to her husband, this is was a total different level of intimacy that we had never experienced before. And so you might have sex with your partner, but not need to bathe them. Oh, yeah. Or, vastly different. Yeah. And, or, or that you kiss them, but you'd never brushed their teeth for them. They mm-hmm. brushed their own. Or that you've never had to brush their hair or oh. cut their fingernails. Because they've, they've been able to, to take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. So this is a whole level of care that it is, is so different and is on such a different level of intimacy that it is profound and it is enough to change a person. And it completely changes her husband. Mm-hmm. And so she wants to acknowledge the love that she felt that he chose to give her as opposed to cutting her nails, combing her hair, and just getting it done because it's a task. Here, mm-hmm. give me your nails, cut, cut, cut. 
she's, she's acknowledging that he chooses to feel an emotion in it, that he chooses to sit in that emotion and acknowledge that it's changing him. Everything in this podcast just shifted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is beautiful. Yeah. And, and, and like, this is, we use the term journey sometimes in various ways in life and sometimes it's overused, but it means a process. And he chooses to go through this process with her. She's not Kinda. just dying on her own. Yeah. He's, he chooses to experience things, to feel things with her, as opposed to some people who have a diagnosis that's terminal and they are going through the process of living until they die. And he chooses to live with her and help her and support her and have her feel love through all of it. Not everybody does that. Some people just care for them. And not everyone's given the opportunity time, time-wise. time That's right. So he has a short period of time, but Talia wants to acknowledge his choice, mm-hmm. his level of awareness, his commitment, his emotions. And what he learns through this. And the fact that since she's passed, he's still trying to process not just her death and his new life, but the changes that he went through, which means that he's opened his heart to connect to people. And so her ending of a human life and returning into her spirit life is a change and an I'm going to call it alchemy. Mm -hmm. It's an alchemical healing and it's an opening for her spouse. Wow. And, and I say alchemy because I do know the nine stages of alchemy. I did get my education to help people move through change. Well, and and you're talking about death being magic. Yes. Yes. Which is why I want to say alchemy. Why I want why I want people to have to go home or or look it up after this show and Google alchemical healing, and I want them to see that there is magic. I want them to see that when people say, "Oh, it's voodoo stuff," or "Oh," and and, and try and make fun of this, there's so much that's made fun of, instead of understanding that there's beauty and love, and that it's authentic and has integrity. And from this conversation, she says, I need to talk about my children other than Georgia or Georgie. She says, um, they're stuck in their grief. They are not communicating. They're not caring for themselves as best they could. And it's because they have made some choices. And she says, so I'm trying to say all of these things today so that if they choose to listen to this recording, that they can understand that their dad chose things Mm. and that the opening in the heart came from choice Hmm. and that my children have choices as well. And I see Georgie made, has made her choices. She says, and I, and I love her for that, but I understand that my other children still have some ahead of them and I'm here for them when they choose healthily. Isn't that beautifully worded? Mm -hmm. Like I, I just, yeah, I just absolutely loved how she approached every single person with love in her family. She doesn't shame them, but she talks about how when we have these unhealthy beliefs that we can feel shame and that that's one of our blocks to connecting and feeling them around us. So Georgie might walk around and say, I feel mom's presence. And the other siblings might say, mm, I don't mm-hmm. and continue to block it. But maybe look at Georgie and wonder, well, why does she feel that? How come she doesn't, I don't? That's a common asked, commonly asked question Mm -hmm. that you and I get. And I think Talia answered that perfectly. Talia did a lot perfectly. Mm -hmm. The next little piece here, Kelly, is quick and short. She says, I want my husband to know that I would like him to move on. I have seen his records in the Akashic field and he has another partner and I'm very happy. So I do want him to know that I support the new partner. And I just want to say to him that because he opened his heart, he will now be ready for a woman with more spiritual 
intuitive and emotional intelligence, good for him. He's earning it. Okay. Isn't that huge? Yeah. (laughs) And Georgie then says to me, oh my God, we just had this conversation. Oh my God, this is so good. Dad needs to hear this. Mm -hmm. He needs to hear that mom's good with it. I said, mom's more than good. She's not just good, Georgie. She knows. Mm -hmm. This isn't I hope. This is I know. Okay, we're ready to start winding down now into the end of this session with the two of them. And uh, Talia says to me, um, I want the men in my family to get their emotional intelligence tools. They need to hear this. Because Georgie deserves a healthy, emotionally intelligent sister-in-law. Oh, She deserves an emotionally intelligent stepmom. Go tell ya. And she says, and I'm looking out for Georgie. Mm-hmm. And she says, but I'm also looking out for the, for the men in my family. Yep. They don't, I don't want my men to have drama. I don't want them to be addicted to the women who create it. Or create it themselves. Oh, I was just going to say that. But you, you triggered yes, something in me. I see that. <laughs> it's all good. I love your defensiveness Kelly of that. skips ahead. Kelly loses her shit. <laughs> <laughs> on the bingo card. <laughs> and you got it all in at the end of this, at the end of the show. That's fantastic. So her mom, her mom point blank says the men need to step up and get their tools. And it isn't just because their lives are going to be completely different and so much healthier and so much more full of joy mm-hmm. and no drama. How about just collaborating with your partners talking things through and creating healthy processes. But I'm saying do it also for your sister because she deserves to have good women in her life. Not the women who want the drama, that come in and fight, that come in and create unhealthy patterns, that hit their triggers and then go spiraling with their with these beautiful men. But the men have to do their work to earn those women. This goes both ways. You don't get that healthy partner without doing your own work. So she's thrilled because she knows Georgie's doing her work. She's doing her work on the other side still as mom, but she's saying the men have to step up and then says to Georgie, I've done my best, sweetie. Oh, (laughs) this is the end of our hour. Little mic drop. And you know know what she says to me? She goes like a boss. And that... (laughs) was what she did. She uses the expression, I handled that session like a boss. That's adorable. (laughs) It really is. And she validated, Georgie comes through and says to me, I want you to know that my dad and I have had that conversation. Cool. She goes, I want, I want to give you the valid, the validation, Karen, the affirmation that dad and I are aware of this. And I said, well, that's good. I hope that he's not just aware and not just going for walks. But that because he's taking care of his physical body, saying, I've got to be in better shape, but that he needs to know that his emotional state, his in, his intelligence, not just IQ, his EQ has to really be upped again mm-hmm. in order to now move forward to be a healthier person and partner. Beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah. She did handle it like a boss. Like she loved all of them and loving the meaning, holding them accountable. Not saying someone else is going to do it for you. Just find a partner that's got emotional EQ that can teach you, Mm -hmm. that can help you, that can fix you. Oh, no, 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 no. She's saying do your own damn work in a really beautiful, loving way. That's what a boss does. You got it. That's leadership. Yeah. I I would like to pause. I'm assuming you're done. I am. Okay. I want to pause and uh, thank Talia. I know that's not her real name, but I'm just going to say this on the podcast Um, there are many, many shows that we do that they recap a session and it's not where we've reached out to get notes. It's not where we have a a, a full recap of, of what was said and done. She let you listen to her recording, which is why you have such extensive notes. Oh, that's correct. That's Georgie. Sorry. Georgie's the, our human being. Yes. Yes. My apologies. Wow. Your job is hard (laughs) as the coordinator of this show. Um, thank you to Georgie. Pardon me. If for allowing 
um, that level of permission to hear the, re the recording back, to be able to go through this in such detail and share these messages. And um, I, I'm just very grateful for, for the way that it kind of, I think, crescendoed <laughs> through this through this session. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's probably one of my favorite shows. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to it because I know when I'm doing the recording with you that I'm so focused on trying to make sure that everything I say is accurate and that I get it in the right order. Yeah, of course. So if people are listening to this and saying, Karen was really different in this show, yes, because I'm really trying to, um, uh, to stay true to Georgie, to be respectful of her and Talia and to her dad and to her brother and sister. Well, I don't think that was a great explanation. Oh. I, and I'm, I'm just going to, well, I'd like to offer my two cents. You're always extremely respectful. That, that's, oh, that's a non-issue. Yeah. Okay. It's just a, it's a given for you. I wanted to illustrate the difference that if people do say Karen was very different in this show, because you're going to see four clients after this recording, yep. and you're going to see them back to back. And when we tape the next show in three days from now, you will have had to recount your own memory, which we don't have fully for sessions, oh, yeah. and go on what you can Yeah. versus someone like Georgie who says, here's my recording, go right mm -hmm. ahead, do whatever you need to with it, mm -hmm. where we actually get to hear the audio back like you guys do mm -hmm. and, and to make such, such detailed notes. That's the difference. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know that sometimes like I really struggle in the podcast. I know the people listening will know this. My verb tenses change. I'll, 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 I can be messy sometimes and say, oh, and, or get something out of order. And it, it, it is because there's no memory for the session and that I'm trying, well, maybe you've said it better than I can. I'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? This has been fun. Yeah. Okay. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you for holding the show together. <laughs> you may be a shit show sometimes, but you are always a boss. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I will probably have that embroidered on something at some point in your life. Uh, say it again. You are a shit show. <laughs> I said you may be a shit show sometimes, oh. but you are always a boss. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, if you guys have questions or comments, you can email us at info at com. We always invite you to like, share, subscribe to all your favorite podcast platforms, to YouTube if this is where you're joining us. It's such um, it's such an honor for us to have those likes, shares, and subscriptions because it helps us reach a further audience. Um, so thank you in advance for that, and thank you to everyone who has already done that. We very much appreciate it. We always welcome you to join us on patreon.com forward slash by Sarlo for more in emotionally intelligent tools if you're excited about what Talia's family is about to do with themselves. And aside from all of that, we just wish you a beautiful, gentle, and happy weekend. <laughs>